in the Netherlands, in Europe. It's now a little past 8 p.m. in the evening. Uh, I've been involved in the crypto and blockchain industry for a couple of years um, with some, some projects. Currently now we are getting ready because tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. European time, we've got our first investor pitch online event for a great project that I just onboarded in. It's europechain.io. So for everybody that's curious, send me a message. I'll send you the invite if you want to join our webinar tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Uh, Central European time. But in this call, and this is Crypto Wednesday, this is an initiative that Gordon and myself took. We started about four months ago. We said, you know, why don't we do a live show every Wednesday? We get some of our industry friends like Eloisa involved and just share, you know, whatever we are learning from the industry, insights, latest developments, who run, yay or nay. And that's why it's yay. Yeah, yay or nay, yay. And now it's it's a big, a big yay. So we're, yeah. we're very excited. And this is a free show. Sometimes people ask us, is, 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 there, is there a compensation model? No, this is a free show. This is just us paying back, getting our friends together, building a community, building a network where people can share opportunities and ideas and thoughts with each other. So before we go to our guest speaker, Gordon, you're, you're in LA. What time are you now? Uh, yes, I am still in LA. It's 11.05 AM. This is our second show today. So just to remind everyone, this is the highest energy show in crypto. Okay, and I got a garbage truck right outside. This is perfect timing. I love it. I love it because you know we can roll with this stuff. So yes, uh, 11 o'clock a.m. It's not our usual 5:30 a.m. But I gotta thank Louisa if I'm saying the name correctly for putting this all together. And this is the time it worked, and that actually ended up making us double productive today. So big, big round of applause. <laughs> I'm still drinking coffee. I would drink coffee. Let's just say I'm drinking lots of Earl Grey tea these days to like, you know, keep pumped. <laughs> um, and just a final note before we dive in, I want to say to any Zoom bomber who comes on here, believe me, you're not dealing with amateurs. We will identify you. We will smack you around like little, you know what, and we will dispose of you out of our Zoom. So, you know, if you have some daddy issues to work out, it's okay. You're, you're red meat to us. So that's the message to all any Zoom bombers who join us. Um, I think we'll dive right in. And Louisa, your your screen went blank, but I, I want to start with you since you're the powerful instigator of this show. Are you with us? I, I think we. Oh uh, well, she will read. Yeah, she'll she rejoin. Okay, uh, Danielle. We lost her. She will come back. She'll come back. Uh, do we have Danielle? Christian, there you are. There you go. Hey, hello. Uh, hello. Okay. How are you? Can you hear me now? Yeah, we hear. Oh, Danielle, there you go. Okay, I'm just going in order. Danielle, you, I mean, you got like a black background behind you. You look very mysterious. <laughs> no, no, simply because uh, now I am in my car. So um, for me, it's night now because I'm in Italy and uh, now it's uh, 8 p.m. here. Uh, so I was driving my car and uh, now I parked my car to follow you. Wow, okay, I appreciate that. Okay, well, just to lay the groundwork, this is an exciting all Italian panel, except for me, believe it or not, I'm not Italian, nor is Sander, rumor has it, I think he's Dutch, no, just kidding. Uh, and the topic is data is the new oil, so start drilling. So we have a very interesting topic today. We're gonna go through each one of our guest speakers who are each individually awesome, and we are going to get their backstory. We are going to get, you know, I always say it's like the Wolverine movie, like we're gonna get their origin story one at a time. So not just what they're up to today, but how they came across blockchain, how they came across crypto, how they got involved in this area, because I, I love that stuff. So Danielle, Mr. Mysterious Guy in the car driving around Italy at night. Let's start with you. Tell us about you and let's tell us about DT Circle. Yeah, DT Circle. But start with you. 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 I want to know the man. So, so DT Circle. DT Circle is uh, the, the project that I'm building now from Italy, and uh, I'm I'm honest with you. I'm I, I, first of all, I'm very happy to stay here with you, uh, because uh, you have to imagine that now in Italy uh, we was uh, we are really really uh, uh, under difficult time uh, to understand uh, all these new technologies. So imagine that I'm starting with uh, a business based on blockchain and big data 
uh, from Italy that is not so simple. What is DT Circle? DT Circle is uh, an ecosystem based on um, uh, big data. Uh, it means that all members that uh, will start to use uh, uh, the app that we are developing, uh, browsing web uh, for messaging apps uh, uh, or something else, uh, of course, they are generating data. Now, uh, thanks to DT Circle, they can start to uh, receive the value of the data they are generating during browsing online. And uh, the value uh, is uh, recognized by a cryptocurrency directly in uh, their wallet. So. Uh, what I mean uh, now, of course, um, uh, you too, you are uh, browsing web in this time too, thanks to Zoom or Google or Facebook or what you want. And you are generating a lot of data every time that Google, Facebook uh, is using uh, to, uh, to statistics, to analysis. But uh, what is, uh, in, in our opinion, uh, the real problem? That uh, people that use web, uh, uh, it, uh, really is not using a service. They are the product of this service because Google or Facebook are using data from people to worth billions of dollars every year. Okay, but for the users, what's, uh, what is uh, the real uh, uh, advantage of all data they are generating? Nothing but just... Uh, 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 an easy research online or uh, an easy buy of products. So uh, we want uh, to invert uh, the system. Imagine that uh, uh, inside an ecosystem, you can browse in your web, uh, use your messaging apps exactly how you are already doing uh, by yourself at this moment, but with uh, a very big difference. You can check in any time, thanks to the blockchain, uh, what is the value of all data you are generating in any time? And uh, this value is recognized directly to you thanks to a cryptocurrency, uh, not for trading, but directly spendable and exchangeable and usable, uh, really like a stable coin. So it's mean that, of course, uh, you prefer- uh, I, I, I'm uh, sorry, you, you have a cryptocurrency use. based on the data, your project? Do I hear that correctly? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So it's mean that the, the value of the currency is uh, directly linked uh, on the, the quantity of data generated by a community. Okay. And uh, as well, you that uh, uh, use our apps uh, uh, during uh, the, the browsing or during your messaging, you are generating data that increase directly your personal value so this is a, a very big difference and uh, is a, a very big challenge that we are uh, uh, approaching uh, of course now we are developing uh, uh, for example messaging apps where uh, using the same crypto uh, cryptography of cryptocurrency you can be sure that your messages are totally protected by the privacy. Or if you prefer, you can decide to monetize the data generated by your messaging, for example, simply clicking a button and you are sharing the data only with us, not with Google, not with Facebook, not with anybody, only with us. So you can uh, Sorry, decide. Let me ask you a question. We're actually privacy. going... We're actually going deeper into the project than I, I still want to do the rest of the speaker introductions, but let me ask you, just because you caught my imagination, yeah. how do you know that the data has value? How do you know it's not junk data? How do you, in other words, how do you, how do you assign it some equivalent value in cryptocurrency? Yes, I, I know, and this is the right way. You have to imagine now, that, for example, of the world that all the You know, he was just about to reveal the secret to everything. All the... There you go. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, imagine that now Now the real world uh, uh, are not doing uh, do it by it, uh, using arms, but uh, uh, the war is based on data. Look at what happened just a few months ago, for example, from USA to China uh, or from uh, in the past with Russian. Now all the world 
uh, want to preserve and control data of people. But uh, the real question is, uh, uh, people uh, know what are the real use of this data? And uh, the second question, in my opinion, is uh, um, people uh, uh, that is generating all this data know that the real value is uh, the people and not uh, the, the, the company that is managing this data. Imagine, for example, if tomorrow- and Actually, you know what, uh, uh, sorry, let me pause you just so I can get the other speakers in. It's interesting, but I wanna have a nice cross conversation. So just bear with me. I'm, I'm so, sorry. I'm sorry that my English is not so perfect. So I. I uh, it's okay, it's and you know so what? I talk fast English, so I will slow down a little bit for our international crowd. <laughs> I'll slow down ten percent because that's about as much as I can slow down. <laughs> but I am excited to be with all of you. So it's good, and I see a lot of good friends joining us. Uh, I, I, Jimmy Fry, and a lot of others. So, uh, Eloisa, I, I don't know if we've ever spoken directly. I know. We've chatted a lot and I've known of you for a while. Hopefully I'm saying your name correctly. And if I'm not, please correct me. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna kind of pass it to you because you in your very good professional, professional persistent way made this happen, made it happen very quickly. Uh, we moved lots of shows around in order to accommodate this group, but I think it's an excellent group that you've assembled. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself in general, not just what you're working on now, but sort of your road into blockchain and crypto and data? I, 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 see, you're, I see you're just interesting. You're doing a lot of interesting things. So I'm gonna hand the microphone to you and just give us your backstory, please. Off mute. There you okay, go. so I'm, I'm muted. Okay, so hi everyone. And thank you guys for having me and, uh, and us here. Uh, you're right, Gordon. I don't think we've ever spoken directly, you know, uh, via Zoom. Uh, we've been chatting a lot. Uh, in Italian, they call me a uh, rompiballe, which means that I uh, I'm very tedious when I want things to happen. Uh, I, I, I think you mean also... tenacious. Tenacious. You're on it. Okay. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's that's never the tedious. Tedious is boring. You're not boring. Okay. Okay, I, I get boring when I just chat you too much, but I really wanted to make this happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is um, why, how I got here, uh, where I'm at, at 22 um, years old. Um, and uh, I sort of started out when I was in uh, university. I was in Bocconi, which is like the Italian equivalent of an Ivy League here in the US. And I was doing an economics and management bachelor degree um, and just, you know, found myself a lot on, um, on the books, um, reading and reading. And I um, somehow uh, then got into startup hackathons and found out about a whole world that was par in parallel going on um, with my studies, uh, which were focused on finance, but not on fintech uh, yet. They were mostly focused on corporate finance uh, and the management consulting. So I, uh, I, I started uh, getting involved in more and more startups. Some failed, uh, some succeeded, um, but it was at that point that I just um, found out I didn't wanna be vertical on one project, but mm -hmm. rather um, leverage my studies um, and uh, even get um, a master um, where fintech was being taught and help um, as many startups as I could to succeed and make the um, disruption revolution happen for everyone um, focusing on the mass adoption. So that is why today I decided to gather uh, in this panel, uh, all the, the people that I'm um, closely uh, working with to, um, to aid the mass adoption, uh, especially Daniele and, uh, and Giovanni here. Um, and, and then I, of course, I couldn't miss out on Christian because um, mm. he's an Italian, he's in Palo Alto, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, he's just been very active and um, he's just published an amazing book, Blockchain Made in Italy. And um, I was so happy to contribute. 
and I, I would like him to share a bit uh, of what he's doing. So uh, that, that's how I got here and uh, Wine Trump Tower, Wine NYC, that is uh, not a very common place for uh, the, the crypto uh, enthusiasts. Uh, it's actually where um, the crypto adoption uh, has been uh, more controversial. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen a lot of projects come and go and even the first bubbles just sort of explode. Um, but uh, as Daniele was saying, um, it's mostly uh, due to what crypto and blockchain can do in relation to the big data, the data generated um, by all of us and our identities. Um, I came here um, uh, with, you know, links to the conservative uh, side of uh, politics, uh, which is uh, conservative, conservative, yes, but still um, trying to work for the people and sort of has opened um, its um, its doors to the possibility of um, of um, making the people self sovereign with their identity and uh, aware of the data they're generating. Uh, so, and, and in that, uh, Daniele is, is involved as well. Lastly, um, a word to, to Giovanni, um, you know, I, I'd really like him to give us uh, his insight on um, how the, the traditional stock markets are also uh, looking at these new projects. Um, and I, I saw someone uh, asking specifically, how do you value something that is um, pegged to to big data uh, to the to the big data, and uh, I and I Daniele and Giovanni strongly believe that the stock markets could help in that. In, in, this, in sense of a liquid efficient market, or specific yeah, the, in, in, in the sense that in the sense that you know, uh, uh, I'm sorry, guys, I ruined the surprise, but um, we are gonna we are gonna uh, go on a. Um, uh, on 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 an IPO soon um, with um, with Daniela's project, and um, we are going to see actively how the the traditional market um, will work to with its like a with its invisible hand to um, uh, help come up with a good uh, value. Um, for the assets based on big data. So interesting. Let me let me pause you there, just so we can get the other speakers to, to introduce themselves. By the way, we have an audience of over five hundred people for this. So, wow, congrats, guys. We, we we love it. Yeah, I think a lot of a lot of people. You know, we pulled to this together quickly, and it, it's bearing fruit. And also, Eloisa, I, once we go through the speaker introductions, you generated a, a fantastic list of of questions and topics. So consider yourself both a guest and co-host. I think we're gonna, okay. I'm gonna get to relax for once and kind of shut up fair, you know, a decent amount and let you kind of run the panel. But let's let's go through the other speakers first, just so they have a moment to introduce themselves. So Christian, you had a good beginning intro. Please continue and tell us the backstory. Sure, appreciate that. Uh, I think, uh... Uh, most of the folks already done a great job introducing me, and uh, I, I'm very much appreciative of you kind of inviting me over on this panel. Um, I think there's some great names and great leaders here. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm Christian Ferry. I'm the uh, founder and CEO of uh, Gear. Uh, and also, uh, recently, we published a new book called Blockchain Made in Italy, like Eloisa said, where we talked about- I'm sorry, about, let, let, uh, let me interrupt one second. Is there an Amazon link that we'll be able to put into the show notes? Or something like there that. is actually i don't have it here with me but uh i'm sure my you know i'll figure you'll, you'll get that over to us and show our viewers yeah can find yeah it. Great. sure appreciate that sure. um so yeah so so through that i think uh, we had a, a great uh presence of eloisa in that book as well and mainly we we tackle some of the discussions around how dlt um and i'm a, kind of a stickler in terms of calling blockchain what blockchain is and calling DLT the science of decentralized ledger technologies. I think we should be more precise in industry, um, but that's a different story. Um, so anyway, so we talked a lot about supply chain, a lot of you know uh, what DLT can do, and um, also some of the new ideas 
around how DLT can become a revenue generating technology rather than just a cost cutting technology, which has always been the main driver. Um, and so we show how, you know, things that we're doing with gear around bringing brands into video games, brands into VR. We're basically able to create digitally authentic products with high value equity in it, like a Gucci bag or a, a Lamborghini or a, uh, you know, a Dolce Gabbana pair of shoes um, that people value in the digital life. Um, so um, I ramble a little bit, but um, if you want to know more, feel free to reach out here. Um, looking forward to, uh, to the panel. Fantastic. Uh, and I can't say it like Louisa did, but Giovanni. Yeah, that's I'm, trying, I'm, trying, I'm, trying, I'm doing my LA version. I'm doing my Los Angeles version of a. I, I put my hands like this, so please. Oh, are you based in Los Angeles? I, I unfortunately, I'd rather be based in Europe with all, all right. of you, um, okay. both for time zone reasons and for every other reason. But there you go. All right. Tell us about you. So just a, yeah, just a giant introduction. So um, um, I'm involved in finance, uh, specifically investment banking, uh, since. Uh, uh, 10 years. Uh, my, my degree is in economics and after that I got my master in uh, venture uh, capital at UCLA. So I've been living in LA for, uh, for a period of time. Then I moved uh, to, um, to London and uh, Switzerland. Uh, and after that, until 2014, I've been living in California again. So my um, half of my career is pretty much uh, outside my country. And um, I got always uh, involved in uh, uh, doing that period in uh, traditional uh, finance, we can say across sector and like uh, classic equity and debt, uh, um, debt deals and uh, uh, operation across companies and projects. But mm -hmm. um, um, after 2014, I've been uh, Pretty much stronger involved in uh, venture capital innovation companies as well. So that's how I start discovering more startups and uh, um, starting the uh, investment phase. And uh, uh, in the uh, following years, um, I start also more, much more into data uh, and uh, blockchain. But of course, my role is uh, clearly staying on the financial side. Um, like uh, uh, as 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 uh, Eloisa mentioned before, we are working together on uh, DT Circle on these amazing projects for getting a uh, um, new uh, model and very very interesting one that we will describe during the topic, um, during the panel. Sorry, and uh, with the vision to uh, align all the process for an IPO of the company because this is the right moment we think. Fantastic, very interesting. Uh, Eloisa, like I mentioned, I, I think I'd love you to kind of run with it if you're comfortable with it. And I think you are with the materials and questions you put towards me. Do you want to sort of take the lead and guide the discussion? Do you care to? Sure. Go ahead, so um, I, I would like to, I don't know if Daniel is, um, is you know, still driving. Uh, Daniel, are you here? Yeah, yeah. Hi, Amber. Okay. So uh, I sort of wanted to uh, go back to the uh, DT Circle project, and uh, you've already given us a, a great, deep um, introduction into it. And um, I heard you mention many times the people, of course, and the community, which uh, seem to be. Uh, the focus of your project um, together with their big data, while blockchain only um, seems to be, as it should be, the, the means uh, for the transparency and for the, um, the value flow. But how do you think that um, the people will actually um, be convinced to jump um, on uh, this new DT Circle ecosystem, um, how do you communicate with the people about the big data? Um, do you do it through education? But listen, I, I, um, first of all, I think that now is the right moment to, to convince people. I tell you why, because uh, 
uh, what I see in Italy, of course, but I think in all the world, uh, now people is uh, tired because uh, people uh, is starting to understand that they are used uh, by uh, a lot of company online that uh, are stealing data anytime uh, without to uh, give them uh, a revenue for this. So, of course, uh, it's uh, uh, simple for us uh, to explain people that uh, uh, looking at the future where uh, big data, uh, as uh, um, usually mentioned, like, for example, the new petroleum, but I think that is very wrong uh, affirmation because petroleum uh, is a, an ended uh, reserve. Uh, but you, anytime online, you are generating new big data. So I think that uh, really the big data are more and more than the new petroleum. Uh, and uh, as well, in the meantime, people uh, is uh, starting really to understand that they have uh, a value. What we are doing uh, is to explain, and it's not so simple, that, uh, of course, blockchain is not just cryptocurrencies. Blockchain uh, may be uh, a system where people can uh, uh, check and uh, verify in a clear way uh, a lot of things, including, in our case, uh, the data that, uh, that they are generating. So imagine what uh, happened when uh, uh, people look uh, in a blockchain system, how is important the value of data that they are generating any minutes with the smartphone in the hand or uh, with their PC online. Uh, try to imagine what uh, will happen when people look the value and receive a part of this value in a crypto wallet. Uh, try to imagine what people can be, uh, can start with uh, 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 like a virus, uh, not like COVID that is a, a bad virus, coronavirus, but with a, 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 a good virus where people uh, share the words, the simply words, look my friends, now you are generating data without a profit. Uh, try to, uh, to use this application inside this ecosystem, making this, the same thing you are already doing. You can continue to, to browse web, you can continue to, to send messages, you can continue to send mail, but look, for any action, in any time, you are generating data and this data have a value. The value of your data you can check by blockchain directly in your wallet. Uh, I think that the, the message is very simple to share. Of course now, and I'm honest with you, uh, is uh, the right moment for uh, uh, a lot of things. The first, of course, because uh, people is starting to understand this. Uh, the second is because uh, uh, now people uh, is looking where for a, a very critical uh, time uh, where uh, um, the crisis in the economic, uh, in all the world, uh, is uh, very hard. And of course, we, we wait for uh, a biggest crisis in the next time. So all people are looking at any way to have an opportunity. And uh, I think that when they start to receive uh, a profit thanks to their data uh, in a, a cryptocurrency that they can use to buy shoes or uh, uh, apparel jeans for their uh, uh, son or daughter. Um, I think that uh, could be really a, a, a revolution. Yeah, so mm, I've spoken uh a bit about the the, the future uh, listing of um, of this big data based uh, crypto project, and uh, I will uh, go through that with Giovanni later. But um, Daniele, have how did you study the big data market, uh, and how um, did you predict the value uh, that the tokens um, could have had based on the big data? Did you do any research? Um, I am thinking that maybe you looked at, you know, um, how much 
Facebook, Google, and so on are um, paying for the process data. Is that it? Yes. Um, you have to, to, um, to imagine that now, for example, look at Facebook because Facebook is the most, uh, uh, the biggest platform that uh, uh, are using big data, of course. Um, you have to think that uh, any account uh, in uh, uh, Facebook, uh, uh, the value is around uh, starting from 80 euros uh, to 120 euros. Uh, try to multiplicate this for all the accounts that are in Facebook and you can have just a part of the, uh, the, the, the big data market. Uh, the, last, uh, the last research uh, uh, is projecting the, the total market of big data around the 1 billion uh, until the end of the next year. Uh, and of course, uh, it's uh, uh, more than uh, any previous uh, done in the last uh, uh, month because uh, uh, thanks to, thanks uh, is not the right word, but uh, uh, especially in this case, thanks to the what happened with the coronavirus where, the, where a lot of people was locked in their house, uh, um, the value of data have uh, an acceleration very, very important. Uh, but uh, I want to tell uh, um, another thing. Uh, you mentioned at the Giovanni that uh, is uh, helping Gaz uh, to approach an IPO. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, for somebody, it uh, could be strange uh, that uh, a company that is looking at new technology, at tokenization, uh, is uh, looking as well at a classic market. But uh, I think that uh, uh, now... Uh, Look what's happening in all fintech, in all system, in all government. Um, all the world is doing the same thing, is try to connect uh, an oldest world with a new world. And it's not so simple because uh, are two different world with two different speed. And uh, we will try to do the same. Uh, why I'm happy to approach an, a classic market uh, thanks to an IPO and uh, why I'm continuing to the process to the tokenization because uh, uh, maybe the first time that there is a, a real connection inside the, the same uh, company, the same system that is uh, uh, linking the, the classic and, old was, and oldest world to new world. Uh, so I'm not looking just for a, a financial opportunity and IPO, but uh, to a real demonstration that uh, uh, classic world and new tech world can uh, go in the same way. Yeah, of course, of course. And um, I've seen some of the questions uh, pop up. Um, actually, one of these was sort of what I was about to ask you. So uh, I don't know, Gordon, Sandra, if you pick up questions uh, while you uh, moderate the panel. Anyways, um, I, yeah, Louisa, I wanted to... I'm actually enjoying having someone else do this and I'm drinking my tea and just enjoying it. So just- Okay, just, great. Just roll up your own <laughs> style. You know, I, I mean, I'm just being clear, you know, again, I'm, I'm just getting to know you, but I, I can tell by our interaction, I'm, I'm comfortable and confident with this. So just, it's kind of fun. So just go with it. Okay, <laughs> okay. So um, I have mentioned that um, I'm here in New York City and that I'm speaking about the big data and the blockchain and crypto with um, some uh, ex-political administration. But anyways, um, Daniele, you uh, and I have been speaking before this panel on an app that is called UUP or UUP. Um, which is a word pun, of course, uh, and it is um, an app that completely runs on blockchain. Everything is truly encrypted, um, and uh, the um, and politicians, of course, uh, are interested in that. So what could the political, um, uh, the, the political side to uh, big data tokenization and uh, just big data um, integration with blockchain B? 
Listen, I, I'm happy that you are talking about the new the new son uh, you have you you uh, p. Uh, but I want to just uh, before to explain what is you have. You uh, have is an app uh, really similar to WhatsApp, but with the big difference. Uh, imagine that uh, WhatsApp is uh, an end-to-end -end, uh, cryptography, uh, but uh, as you know, and uh, now all people know, uh, the end-to-end -end cryptography uh, can uh, preserve the privacy, uh, but not uh, a total privacy. And this is the reason why uh, Facebook uh, um, is using parts of WhatsApp messages to receive big data from people. What I mean, that people is using uh, uh, messaging uh, thinking that uh, their privacy is totally protected. But it's not so true. So what we don't, uh, uh, if you agree with me that uh, at this time, the Bitcoin cryptography is uh, uh, the most cryptography um, uh, uh, in the world. And uh, if you agree with me that uh, the Bitcoin cryptography uh, uh, is uh, very strong, otherwise uh, it means that we are discussing about the possibility that uh, uh, an hacker uh, or uh, a, a joking uh, uh, guy can uh, um, uh, accept to the cryptography of Bitcoin, and that I don't think so. Imagine to use the same cryptography inside a messaging apps. It means that uh, uh, we can show to people that really their messages are protected by a very strong cryptography because we are using the cryptography, the same cryptography of Bitcoin to protect the privacy in the, inside the messages. Of course, uh, government uh, are looking at this app, uh, but uh, the, 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 the answer is simple because uh, uh, government uh, need uh, yeah, an aside to uh, have the, uh, to manage and to have uh, the protection of the data of people. Look what's happened a few months ago uh, all fight uh, for because uh, it's uh, now very important that uh, um... you know let's take you know Louisa let's yeah did let's, it, let's it, get it, Giovanni uh, and Christian that the, the also... privacy of people are relevant. Oh, so Daniela, we just lost you sorry? for we just lost you for a second. Ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, uh, so uh, what I'm uh, I repeat uh, um, now, of course, the government are looking with a, a very big interest to our app because, uh, in a way, is able to protect uh, really the privacy using the cryptography I told you. In uh, other side. Uh, Of yeah. course, uh, it can be used to chance uh, industries, but in another side, uh, uh, if uh, people start to use this app uh, in, a, in a state, uh, the government uh, uh, could be sure that uh, all data generated by the people are not uh, shared or uh, diffused in other parts of the world. Look what uh, what was the fighting uh, for TikTok uh, uh, example. Yeah, uh, of course. So let me pause you here and um, get uh, back to um, Christian. Um, and I wanted to ask him, since he's been uh, for a long time in the US, uh, working from Palo Alto, um, what does he uh, see in this new opportunity of actually uh, using blockchain to value more our big data? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. Um, so I think uh, we're at the very, very beginning of this, um, I would say, um, you know, era. And um, I think there's, there's a lot of use cases that we haven't even conceptualized yet become clear as we start testing, experimenting with this new technology. Effectively, um, you know, we know that data is the new oil. 
and how data is going to flow and use um, is going to determine a lot of um, things around the world, whether you know it's for individuals, for enterprises, for governments. Actually, Christian, let me, let me ask you a question. I, I hear that mm -hmm. I hear that expression a lot. Data is new oil, and obviously, there's sort of the superficial meaning that it's you know with the powers of the world economy and it's liquid and goes here and there. Is there any deeper level to it? And there may not be. I'm just trying to tease it out because that's an interesting analogy. Like people say Bitcoin is a new gold. You know, data is new oil. Like what, what are the, is there any other layers there? Well, yeah, it's a good question, Gordon. I think, you know, what DLT can do when it comes to data is, and, you know, this word has been used a lot, democratize access to information and use of data. You know, there's some case study experiments happening right now around um, patients' data. Um, I was on the board of a company that was uh, allowing patients to own their own health records. And basically they would have, uh, they had a passport. They still have a passport with their, uh, you know, uh, health records that they are permissioning now to clinics, to hospitals, to any sorts of medical professional, professional that needs it. And the benefits are multiple, right? Um, the benefits for patients is that obviously, you know, if you get sick and you check into a clinic, right? Um, you don't have to repeat yourself in a sense, right? So fill out the information, there's different, you know, version control issues and so on, right? So you're basically bringing the passport with you wherever you go, which basically reduce a lot of the cost from both sides in a sense, right? The cost of time for the patients and the cost of, you know, medical professions having to take down your notes and so on. Uh, the other element that I think is democratizing even further is, you know, giving the opportunity to patients, individuals who actually own their data and decide what to do, right? There's a big talk about creating a marketplace for information where you effectively can sell the information or license the information. And this can be done in a zero knowledge, zero knowledge proof environment. So without you actually people knowing who you are, um, and so that would basically, you know, uh, level the playing field in a sense, right? So it's no longer the big cause making money off your data. It's about them asking who's got the data and who's willing to sell it to me, right? Um, so this is some of, the, some of the use cases, some of the experiments that are happening. But as I was saying at the earlier, at the beginning of this conversation, you, Gordon, sorry, I said- You, you know what, I think what you're making me realize is the uniqueness of oil is if there's a global spot market for it and regardless of where it originated, it, it has value somewhere and it's standardized. And you're, 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 what you're saying is, a, is evoking in me the idea is that data in some ways, when it's properly packaged and properly sort of managed in what you're talking about, acquires those commodity-like characteristics. <clears throat> yeah, That's yeah, say? starting, yeah, correct. I mean, it's two things, right? It's access to data Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's, if you think about it, there's a lot of silent system around the world that um, there's a lot of data. Think about the city council or the land department of a country, right? Or, or mm -hmm. of a city. Um, all their system and their servers are silent. If you want Sorry, to access- you siloed or silent? Siloed. So they're like, like self-contained. Okay. They're not okay. connected. So okay. if you want to, for example, pull up an information about a parcel in Santa Clara County, you have to go down to the city and mm -hmm. use their terminal to do that, right? So that's not accessible. So one of the things that DLT can do is find a way to share that information in a secure way, right? Mm -hmm. The other element to it is also having information that is actually realistic and true, like true information, right? And it, it's a gray area when it comes to it because obviously we know that blockchain does not verify the information. Blockchain is merely a, a ledger. So we, we have a saying in the business that we say crap in, crap out. Mm -hmm. If you put crap in, you know, you're gonna record crap, right? So that's why it's very important to have oracles, right? And that's why, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, Chainlink and a lot of other companies are working hard around that. But the, the, having a place where the information can be considered true mm -hmm. by most people, um, that's value added to the information, to the data. Right. So if you think about there's a lot of um, use cases around where you need to have information that it's true, that it's real, that it's that it's being authenticated in a sense. Um, and again, as I was saying, Gordon, you know, 
there's we're scrapping the surface like we don't know what we don't know right it's a well new technology we know there's a lot of use cases that could be applied to it it's just i think it's too early to tell and a lot of this thing will come out with experiments like it happened for the internet for the cell phone for uh for the computer um so interesting yeah and um also something else i wanted to ask you christian is um, an ecosystem is made up, you know, of so many actors, and especially when data uh, of the people um, is involved, um, there are a lot of very, uh, very interested actors from public administrations to just um, the private entities. And um, how do you see that? Um, how do you see that happen? Um, on a wider scale, like uh, how do you see the inclusion of public administration, pu uh, private entities and people happen? Um, are there gonna be a lot of um, conflicts, of a conflict of interest or um, is, is there uh, already some, um, some bigger scale um, public uh, administration project that has, uh, has been leading the way? Yeah, good question. So the uh, experiments with DLT and public administration have been going on for, for many, many years. I mean, I, I remember back in 2007, 16, I think, the time that, um, you know, I was advising some parts of, some of the departments of the European commissions, right? And they're all around identity um, voting, right? Early experiments around um, voting with DLT has been going on for a few, a few years. It's not as simple as it sounds, because obviously you have to think about identity and making sure that you're able to recognize the identity without revealing the identity, right? So it gets, it gets complex. Um, healthcare records are just like we said, you know, a way to kind of distribute the informations without being hackable, right, in a secure way. Um, you know, I, I think there's a great use case here for COVID, right? If you think about the best user, the best users for, for DLT, as I, as I keep saying in my book, right, DLT is not the cure for everything, right? You gotta understand whether you actually need it or not. So you have to ask yourself the right questions or find somebody that knows it to help you go through the process. Yeah, of course. But what I was and, saying about COVID. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I, I was just kind of find, wrapping up. I would just say for COVID, if you think about it, it's ideal for DLT. The best use case for DLT is when you need to deal with in entities that you don't trust, where your data needs to go out your mm -hmm. firewalls into companies that you don't trust or entities that you don't trust or in the hands of who you don't trust, right? And so if you think about COVID, we have uh, uh, the world populations, right, is affected, which means that we have every single country in the world that needs to be able to track who has been affected by COVID, who has been vaccinated by COVID and things like that, right? And that requires these countries to, to need to talk to each other to see the full people, right? Because obviously we're not in vacuum, right? We fly around the world, we travel. So I, I it has let, to- Let me comment there. You know, I, I don't oversell myself on the show, but I am an attorney who practices in this area. And as you were speaking, all my privacy and data security bells were ringing very loudly about what you're saying. And, and you're mm -hmm. right, it, it's, I mean, you, you have your sovereign data as an individual, but yet you have this countervailing value of knowing who's been affected, who's been vaccinated, and what's going on, but that data can easily be abused. And we don't have a one world system where we can kind of monitor what's going on. Not yet, it's going to... correct. Yeah, this exactly. kind of may be leading to it. So I, I, I can see the policy issues that you're talking about and wrestling with. So it, it, right. it's interesting. That's right. Yeah, yeah and that's why uh, I think also it's a... my, uh, I, I just, you know, you, um, sorry to interrupt. You just got me, my mind started uh, when you said um, zero knowledge proof and uh, talked about the e-voting. And just on, on Twitter the other day, um, Vitalik came into a Twitter discussion I was having with a group of people and he as well um, thought that um, ZKPs would have been a great, great solution. Mm. So um, then uh, Giovanni, um, you here? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Okay, great. Just checking. <laughs> we got like... We got like cross country connection going on. So um, you you come um, here representing the uh, traditional world uh, of you know the stock markets and the corporate finance uh, and the listings. 
the observing the the listings especially uh from london now i think you're in uh what do you see the trends being for the 2020 uh 2021 years and um do you see uh these projects uh you know being successful uh on the stock market yeah so uh Let's, let, uh, let me start from uh, the beginning of the 2020, just as an introduction. Um, I think this has been uh, quite interesting here if we consider the uptrend at a downside at the same time during the year, because we face uh, uh, three interesting uh, phenomena the, um, that increase volatility a lot. Clearly, we, we face with a pandemic, the pandemic with the shutdown of the global economy and uh, which caused also a global equity market collapse, but not in every country, as we, we will see later on. At the same time, we faced the US election and uh, with the Brexit here in UK, and that affects Europe as well. So on the, uh, on the pandemic uh, um, side, uh, we saw an interesting fact starting in, in the US where we saw the US uh, uh, bond yields just getting uh, down uh, below the 1%. And uh, this affect the e major equity markets that trade at more expensive valuations in terms of course of uh, um, uh, price to earning ratios. The fact is that uh, with the pandemic, uh, so many important policies from the government has been put in place. And the, uh, the question now uh, on the bond side is to understand how quickly the government will try to repay uh, those debts with the measure that they put in place with the pandemic lockdown. Clearly, uh, every country uh, has a different uh, um, policies and different recovery. Uh, the US are uh, for historic reason, uh, quite faster. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, on the equity side, uh, we saw an impressive uh, outperformance of the US stocks versus the non US stocks. For example, if we, uh, we saw that uh, uh, the NASDAQ this year just uh, overperformed 25%, while the FTSE 100 here in UK uh, got a downside of uh, over 10%. So that's uh, pretty impressive if uh, you just compare the equity. But what's the, the main reason of this? The, the main reason uh, it's, uh, uh, I mean, we can find just uh, looking at the composition of US market where the US market is so overweight of technology and healthcare stocks. And uh, this, clearly affect the, uh, the growth of the index and the uh, major index. It's clearly the reason of the data as we were talking before and uh, the funds effect. So Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. We saw in fact during the, uh, uh, this phase that these stocks, including of, of course, uh, Microsoft, just composed 25% of the market capitalization of the SP 500. So that's why with uh, just these five stocks that continue to grow, even if so many companies are or collapsing or uh, getting uh, a downside, the index still remain high. That's why we are trading on the uh, high price of the index in last uh, uh, few days. We are just uh, making new high day by day. That's why. And uh, uh, technology stocks, on, uh, based on this analysis, essentially uh, got two main factors from the uh, from the lockdown. The first one is that uh, clearly, with the, uh, the decline of the government bonds, the investors, uh, we, because so many investors were typically. Uh, invest in bonds, but uh, there's a um, uh, there's a challenge where um, the investors were typically looking at more technology stocks like uh, uh, long duration because they were expecting uh, to grow earnings just long term, not in short terms. But uh, with that decline, 
uh, they made essentially the present value of this future earning more valuable now. And um, of course, because the, the second factor is that the lockdown uh, just creating uh, the, the fact and the reality that the consumers went online for purchase, they were making video call technologies or like we are doing now, we are doing, we are using technology for um, uh, worldwide panels and uh, what, or watching streaming services. So the, da the data became so many important and we saw that companies are trading and increasing their value just for that main reason. And uh, this is the, the key, um, we can say the key resume of the year because the data also got a strong, strong growth in the stock markets as well, creating clearly maybe uh, just like probably in Europe, so many new, new consumers, new lifestyles, and at the same time, the needs of new listing. Because we see, uh, like, can, can you imagine right now just listing a new, for example, hospitality company or- I, I, I should, no, I'm sorry, let me jump in one second. You said an interesting word there. You said new lifestyles. Can you, can you explore that a little bit? Yeah, just, uh, 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 so, so you say uh, on, on my previous comment, yeah, so, so essentially the, uh, the, um, just, just talking about the trend that uh, clearly will continue, like creating new, cons new, new consumers and new lifestyles in terms of uh, people that use data that maybe before they were not using that and uh, they uh, understand that it's more valuable essentially. Mm -hmm. Interesting. You know, uh, it's, what a, well, yeah. let me just throw that out there. You know, one of the one of the trendy words five ten years ago was digital nomad, and yeah. you know, and I and I I, I kind of Absolutely. aspired to be a digital nomad, but COVID has completely reduced my nomad lifestyle to sitting exactly. in the same chair in Studio City year month in and month yep. out. But you know, there is, you know, it's, it's not just access; it's what you can do with that access, and then the fact that you can do your work and access your data from everywhere. You know, have laptop will travel. You know, be in Trump Tower, put to go together a panel with people all right. over the world. It, 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 there is a, a lifestyle impact. It's to some extent it's filtered down from new commercial opportunities, but there is sort of a a worldview that's evolved also based on immediate, accurate, vast ac access to data. It's, an, it's interesting where you put it. Mm -hmm. But go on. Yeah. So yeah, Giovanni, you're, and, you're you're also um, one thing I, I wanted to ask you, and and then I'll let you speak. Uh, you you speak about a new lifestyle. Um, if you could also uh, explain a bit about the volatility that um, that the the big data value could have um, in in the next months to come, since we're just now exploring this uh, whole new era. Yeah. So um, on my point of view, clearly the uh, volatility of the last, the last year has been visible for everyone where we faced the first uh, three months uh, with the uh, collapse of the stock markets and then they recovered totally, uh, majorly the, the US, but it just due uh, mainly uh, for the data companies we, we named before uh, the funds. So we can see that the train, in my opinion, will continue, even if uh, uh, they uh, probably say, or so many people think that the uh, company are uh, too high in terms of prices, but we are facing with a second wave and probably with a third wave of lockdown. So the question is, with this lockdown, uh, are, uh, are people using more data? If the answer is yes, I, I, I don't see why they, they don't continue the trend. So in my opinion, of course, yes. Okay, gotcha. And um, could you explain a little bit um, yeah. about what you see for the DT Circle project and how come that you were so, you are so enthusiastic about going for a listing? Yeah, absolutely. So essentially, um, as uh, uh, you and Nia just mentioned before, uh, we started uh, working on this uh, uh, just already 
couple of months and we uh, we see uh, interesting uh, developments. Uh, as, as I mentioned on uh, my last comments uh, uh, of the new lifestyle, it's uh, the, there's so many needs of new listings and that's one of the main uh, point we were, uh, we came up since the beginning um, um, together, of course, with the needs of uh, data company. So this is the, the uh, first assumptions we got. Uh, did you cycle is, at the same time? Uh, it just, in my opinion, uh, just an amazing business in the right time. Um, if you think about the uh, funks uh, companies that we mentioned before, because uh, numbers and growth are uh, quite high in just a couple of years. Also, the company is making acquisition and uh, got license. So in, uh, for digital business, it's uh, real assets. And uh, that's pretty important as already a global structure and uh, different presence. But in my opinion, as a impressive vision and a great management that uh, Daniele is just aligning in the organization in the right way. Mm. So uh, we started, of course, just uh, uh, reviewing um, all the requirements and making all our feasibility. And uh, the company is just uh, making a great steps and uh, um, uh, we're moving for uh, for London as a um, as a place for listing with the uh, in the stock markets. Just because London is one of the, of course, top financial center, but so many international business are located here and uh, uh, can be also um, one of the starting point in, in case we, we we talk on the US later on, but. Uh, uh, for a European uh, company uh, to be listed here is just uh, great. So we are uh, we are right now uh, in the process and moving very fast. Uh, and uh, just right now, um, until the end of the year, uh, finalizing the bridge round for the equity story, story as requirements that the stock market just uh, uh, told us. And our plan is uh, uh, going for the final filing and. Uh, IPO for late Q1 2020. And that's, uh, I think, uh, uh, it could be probably uh, great, not just because the IPO is just a great, uh, not final point, but probably a starting point for making a company uh, big, but just because we realized that not so many blockchain companies have been listing. So also, if you think about, we, we could probably make uh, an interesting achievement uh, on the uh, valuation and the business model that we get in. That's our big goal for Yeah, the there's, there's huge potential. And you know, exactly. just to wrap it up, uh, and then um, you know, we'll go for the open forum. Yeah. Um, I was speaking about this with uh, Tom Vase just the other night. I had him over for dinner here. Um, you know he's he's locked uh, he's locked here in New York City pretty pretty bored, mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, so he was here um, enjoying an Italian dinner and uh, he even was very impressed that we were approaching um, a regular listing on a traditional market. When I told him, he's like, "What are, are you going on, on Binance? You know, I know that stuff." And I said, no, 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 uh, <laughs> it, it's going to be a traditional thing. So he's going to wait exchange. for it as well. Yes. Uh, we did that's a, true. A, a, amazing job. And, and actually, there, there's a question that popped up that's close to my heart just now from Mark. Actually, Mark, if, if you like, so sorry, let, let me back up one step. This has been fantastic. We're, we're now at the part of the show where we go to open forum with our alumni speakers and dedicated repeat attendees. Um, because that's where things get even more lively, though I think it's been pretty lively so far. Mark, if you're in a position to, uh, would you care to, there I see you. Um, do you want to address your question? The one you just did? Yeah, Hi. I just wondered, if you're listing in London, are you listing on AIM or the main market? Um... So basically we are considering uh, both options and why. Uh, hay market uh, is clearly great for our requirements and uh, yeah. can be uh, quite easily, but uh, uh, the main market, it's probably uh, our goal also because the other blockchain company uh, has been listing there. 
It's called so, Argo blockchain. Uh, have you already hired all your advisors? Um, <laughs> how far along the process are you? We're working on that. Okay. Um, and then, Sir, let me, thanks, Mark. And Sergey, I'm, I'm gonna bring on Sergey. He, he is our Moscow counterpart. He's our, he's our man in the Kremlin. Uh, Sergey, are you available to unmute and video? I know I kind of just threw that at you. Well, otherwise, we head over to Richard Ross. He's also here. He's got a question. Oh, we can do that. Okay, we'll get. We'll let Sergey come on in a second. Richard, please. Um, I would just uh, respectfully suggest that you, if you're serious about not dying, don't list on either TSXV or London AIM. Uh, the former has. Uh, Warren coverage, which is ridiculous. And so you're basically getting no valuation and the latter has no coverage by the market. So um, you go public and nothing happens. And it, it's worse than being a startup in any way. So you have none of the upside and all of the downside uh, until they restructure it. Um, I would strongly suggest um, if you don't wanna die slowly, which is the worst possible way, you do not list on the London game or get yeah. TSXV or TSXV for other reasons. Um, I believe one of them might have a relationship with Montreal. Um, if so, don't do that either. But um, yeah, that, you know, that's it. Do that's whatever you want. No, 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 no. Uh, it totally makes sense, but just to reply to your question. So essentially the only uh, move for the aim uh, was just because the requirements were quite easily spread the main market, but clearly, clearly we are uh, considering the second options, but it's, it's just a point of requirement. But uh, uh, we know that AIM, it's not like uh, um, there's no liquidity as well. And the AIM, it's it just more for companies that has no revenue. That's why there's no liquidity. In this case, uh, could be just a transition starting point. So like uh, you you just start listing on the AIM and then you move in the other market. But, 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 okay. But it's going to ruin your reputation. Um, I'd still yeah, suggest. Yeah. Yeah, okay, fine. If you want to be tainted, but that's that's uh, suicidal. I would argue. Um, look again at the SEC liberalized um, Reg CF and Reg A plus. Yes, uh, like last week, ten days ago. So, you, you got, um, okay, so let, let me jump in one second. I okay. I, I, as a securities attorney, also I, I, I love this topic, but I don't yeah. want to go too deep on. <laughs> there is listing things when we're talking about data as the new oil, but don't be sorry. It's all good. And, you know, the, the initial kind of question, you know, it is an area of, of interest to me also. So listen, there. And, and, well, I, I love startups. Cool. I don't like them to kill themselves. You know what? And I'm sure they don't want to die, but let's, let's, look, at the, <laughs> let's look in the chat also. Um, ba -ba -ba. Paul Marion, are, are you on still? You had a good point about uh, zero knowledge proofs. Uh, actually, I, I recognize a lot of these people. So Paul, Torben, uh, Aaron, you're, Corey, you folks are welcome to join in. Hey, Paul. If, if, Paul, if you want to throw something in, just make sure you unmute yourself. We see you, but we can't hear you. Hey, Corey. Corey, my friend. Yeah, there we go. There we it's go. like we're getting the band back together. I love it. Okay, uh, Paul, um, just, yeah. just do me a second. Before you, before you start, yeah, my just, question. introduce yourself for a second. Say who you are and what your interests are. Uh, okay, go ahead. I, my name is Paul Marin, and uh, I run a consulting firm. One second. <laughs> maybe maybe kill the video, because I think you're, you're, I think just you're being on awkward. medium bandwidth. But go ahead. No, it should be it should be good now. Okay. So you, you actually dropped you a lot me? of interesting. Yeah, we can. You actually dropped a lot of interesting things on the chat. So just uh, feel free feel free to throw a few of them at our. Okay. People. Bit of background first, which I, I'm uh, Paul Marin. I run a consulting firm in mainly focused on uh, financial crime. My background is in international law enforcement, and I've got a master's in forensic computing and cybercrime. Um, a lot of the kind of hype around zero knowledge proofs and uh, blockchain and um, self sovereign identity is, are great in theory, and I, I'm wholeheartedly bought into that. But there's been a lot of kind of research coming out uh, most recently around um, 
voting. MIT came out this week to say blockchain for voting is a terrible idea. <laughs> but um, huh. I'm, I'm super interested in how you actually handle the privacy aspect uh, of the actual proposal as it's been uh, kind of suggested. Zero knowledge proof doesn't necessarily deal with it. And I know that from coming from a dig digital forensics perspective, because you can de-anonymize even uh, the strongest protocols. Uh, CypherTrace came out um, in the last two months with uh, their product to de-anonymize Monero transactions. So there's practical uh, products out there to actually combat the actual implementations that you're actually proposing. I'm curious as to how far down the um, proof of concept you've gone with actually handling these challenges. <laughs> well, so, I can uh, jump in. Yeah, um, exactly. I was very gonna, quickly. I was going to say. <laughs> no, it's, it's anyone. Anyone's deep. <laughs> Good work. No, absolutely. Well, I was going to be brief. So, so to your point, um, you know, everything is at the experimentation level right now. There's no like at scale or bulletproof use case out there, period, right? So that's, that's the nature of what we're doing here. The flip side of things is that um, from every technology, you have a counter technology, right? You just set it um, zero proof, but you also think about quantum computing, right? So now you start thinking about quantum resistant computing and so on, right? So a blockchain. So the, the, it, it's almost like a race. Um, as of now, I don't know of any um, good use case that employees utilize zero knowledge proof at scale, right? And the reason why Please. I say a scale is because to your knowledge before something goes a scale has to be, you know, bulletproof, right? So before you put all the patient's information of a massive clinic like Stanford, a massive healthcare system at Stanford, you wanna make sure that just like you said, information doesn't get leaked or, um, or else. Um, so that's that's the point. I want to make sure that we're talking about like experimentational technology. We're not at a point where we can actually have um, at scale use cases yet, unfortunately. But hopefully soon. Yeah. In fairness, if you do crack that nut, you've got a fantastic proposal. But um, yeah, it's just very early days in the technology that you're talking about. Yeah. And, and Paul, you you dropped some other good comments in the chat. Do you want to follow up? Um, there was one. Oh, yeah, actually, I think it was Christian that mentioned about um, you can have uh, permissioned and non-permissioned blockchains. And uh, that's super useful. It makes it much easier to scale and uh, uh, very useful for centralized or government uh, proposals. But for, for a public platform, that means that it's centralized and it can be controlled and kind of goes against the whole ethos of decentralization and blockchain. Mm. So I'm kind of curious as to how DT Circle actually uh, handles that. Is it proposing that DT Circle will be the curator and the controller of uh, the actual system or is it going to be a, a truly decentralized platform? Daniele, you here with us? Yeah, I'm with you and uh, uh, so um, we were asking about um, the, the yeah yeah I hear system. I hear the uh, the question. Okay. Um, uh, of course, uh, uh, imagine that now our blockchain is based on a quorum. A quorum is, uh, as you know, uh, uh, um, uh, say, uh, another version of a team with a uh, decentralization. And uh, uh, of course, uh, um, what we are doing to to uh, to adapt the the blockchain in our case uh, is uh, to uh, review some part of the blockchain to have more fast blockchain, uh, preserving the centralization and permissionless. And it's not so simple as you can understand. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. And uh, uh, guys, I have just a problem here that uh, I, I, as I told you, I am in the car uh, and, um, and uh, I have two main problems. The, the first problem is the battery that is going uh, fast down. But the second real problem that, uh, as I told you, I'm calling from Italy. And uh, I don't know if you know that uh, in Italy now we have uh, a lockdown starting uh, at uh, 10 p.m., 
so it's the second time that Paul is, <laughs> is looking at me and is asking me when <laughs> I will go. There, there's, the there's, like, there, there's, a, there's a man alone in his car. Yeah. <laughs> He's in there for a long time. What's going on no, in that car? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they, it's the second time blockchain pass and uh, is asking me, oh, you have to go at home because of the, 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 the time of lockdown is near. <laughs> okay, no, no yeah. we don't want to get you a fine. Yeah, no, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, but uh, this was uh, 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 my guilt because it was uh, a misunderstanding about the the time of this panel. Uh, and uh, I'm. Uh, Don't I'm, worry, we're, we're happy to have you. It's okay. Don't no, worry. I'm very sorry. I tell you why because I see this panel uh, very very interesting uh, as well. Uh, uh, I looked at uh, there are uh, a lot of professionals and experts, uh, and uh, uh, I want to just to tell something. For example, to uh, Mr. Christian Ferry, uh, because I'm curious to, to read uh, his book in the next days of course. Uh, and uh, uh, at the beginning of this panel, we were spending just few words about mass adoption. Uh, now, mm -hmm. it's important that uh, all people, including me. Uh, we try to to work uh, in the same way to 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 show to people that blockchain is not just cryptocurrencies, uh, and uh, uh, if you want uh, to uh, to be to 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 go and uh, cover the challenge that uh, people is looking at blockchain for just a stupid uh, use, uh, uh, it's a very important panel like this with uh, many experts like this. So I'm very happy to stay here. Very good. We just, we just don't want you in jail. That's the only thing. Very very good job because it's the first time that uh, I'm very interesting at the panel uh, that I'm participating. <laughs> well, you know, we'll, 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 I'll, I'll give a shout out to myself, but I'll especially give a shout out to Eloisa, you know, because she, she's the impetus. So everyone give a round of applause. Thank very you. Good. Thank you, guys. Very, very uh, good. So, Daniela, just, just before you go, I think um, your audio froze for a little bit while you were explaining the, the blockchain ecosystem. And someone is asking, was it proof of work or proof of stake that you said? Yeah, this is a, this is a, a, a very good question because uh, now is a big fighting in the in the blushing world, uh, looking at proof of work or proof of stake. Um, uh, I'm honest with you. We would we would like to go at the proof of stake process. Uh, because uh, uh, I believe uh, it's uh, in our use, it's more simple and uh, uh, we don't need a lot of uh, uh, energy of, um, of uh, computing for uh, do it. Yeah. So we yeah. are looking for a, a proof of stake. Okay. But and I know I that know. there are... That I know okay. that there are a lot of people that uh, for them, uh, uh, they believe just in proof of work. Well, Lots of you know, I'll, 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 jump on, I'll jump in on that. I mean, there's, they, they, I don't know if they believe in proof of work. It's like we, we haven't received a completely convincing proof of stake of proof of stake model yet. But we didn't have reliable digital currency until we had Bitcoin. I mean, I think I think people are, yes, in, in every camp, there's people who are ideological and kind of, you know, fat, you know, set on their point of view. I mean, I'm, the, the, for, for myself, I mean, at the moment, I think proof of work is the most reliable so long as it's properly distributed, but I'm, I'm seeing what, for example, Casper is doing and some other blockchains, they're an Ether, Ethereum 2.0 looks promising. I think, I think we're getting there. I just, I just don't know if it's perfect yet. And proof of work just makes so much logical sense given the nature of the math problems it's trying to solve, but it, it's obviously inefficient. It obviously damages the environment to a certain extent. So I think it produces greater net benefit. So just, just a thought. Um, I, I, think, I think we're gonna head towards wrapping this out, head towards wrapping this up. Um, if there's any questions. Gordon, Gordon I think there was uh, one of our friends from Germany, Torben. Oh, Torben, uh, yeah, okay. A and, and, oh. and Torben is, is a frequent, frequent guest, so Torben, go ahead. And, and I'm, I'm sorry. So good to see you twice in one day. <laughs> I promise to come uh, come the, also for this session. Thank you. Uh, Please go thank ahead. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. As it's a really interesting one, uh, we are also quite busy in, or quite into data, mm -hmm. especially 
uh, data as a revenue and um, we had some issues to find like, like serious or scientific research about quantifying data. We heard the 80 to 120 range from Facebook and there's other research about quantifying the Facebook data like around 200 uh, USD or something. Mm -hmm. But there, I never saw like a real scientific paper or something to nail it down to tell okay it's uh, one gigabyte of data in i don't know in infrastructure uh, data is worth 1000 euros or something do you have anything yeah but you have to understand that uh, in my opinion uh, it's not so simple i'll tell you why because the 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 value of data is based not just on quantity, as you can understand, but uh, uh, is dependent on the quantity and quality of data. So uh, it, it, it's impossible to say one gigabyte of data, the value is uh, X USD, depending on quality of data. And the quality is uh, the real, uh, the real uh, um, uh, important measure of data uh, for any users in the world. Yeah, uh, Torben, I just want to kind of jump in a little quick. I think it's the the, the value of data lies in the in the eyes of the beholder. So uh, you know, if you think about the value of a, a you know a Pfizer to get patients' data about, let's say, clinical trials on COVID. Um, vaccines is one thing, right? But the same data might not be worth anything to a construction company based out of Germany. I don't know, right? And so, you know, you know, the, uh, it's a good question that you pose. Um, I don't think we're gonna come down to kind of a price sheet of data. I think it's gonna be more of a fluid solution, more and more like a marketplace where you're gonna have supply and demand and you're gonna have people that are gonna value a lot of the data that you have and a lot of people that wouldn't care about it. Does that make sense? <laughs> Uh, to be honest, we are in the real estate sector and trying to make this kind of marketplace. Be but I was asking like you guys, if you have something where we can challenge the whole idea, because we have the same opinion that it's pretty fluid, it's difficult to measure, and you somehow make an artificial demand and supply kind of metrics. And also some, we, we are also building in an AI behind it that we can like connect everything properly. So I was just asking to, uh, yeah, to I haven't, I honestly haven't seen it. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of people talking about it. Um, I haven't seen effectively like one, uh, you know, go-to for it. Um, I think though that the, the, the massive opportunity here is user data. And the reason why that is, is because we're already used, use ourselves to kind of give out our data for Facebook, eBay, every time that we sign up to any sorts of kind of pro, um, platform, right? And, you know, mm -hmm. you know, the saying that if you're not the customer, you're the product. Mm -hmm. And so the understanding that, that we have that concept already instilled in ourselves, right? It's actually much easier for us to segue into a marketplace. We can actually start um, charging people for our data. Um, and there's a lot of marketing research company out there that are willing to kind of pay for that data, especially after all the shenanigans happening with the GP GDPR and all the lawsuits and things like that. People are, nowadays want to be kosher every time they talk about data, right? It's become this kind of, you know, all of a sudden data becomes very important, right? And very, very touchy, touchy, to be honest. So it has to be handled properly and uh, paid and cannot be just um, stolen, if you will, for use of commercial purposes. Um, but I do think there's a massive opportunity that has not been um, exploited yet. Um, mm -hmm. And I think obviously, DLT can come in in terms of kind of distributing the data, but also validating some of the data. Um, and real estate use case is also a great example of that. Um, uh, so yeah, I think we'll, we'll see as the time goes on. Interesting. Hey, great. Great to hear that it's supporting our idea. <laughs> hey, that must feel good. Um, I'd, be, I'd be remiss, Sergey. I was trying to lead to you before, but your, your screen was blank. Uh, I just want to give you a chance to say hello. And if you have any questions for the panelists, feel, feel free. This is, this is our man in Moscow. And talk, take a moment just to talk about your show and your channel, which is very successful. And you've been nice enough to have us on a few times. But just come on in. You know, guys, I don't have a question, but I have, I don't know, uh, it's, it's just a, 
recommendations or treating the data, the data what we have is it, our own, yes, for sure. But to be frank, I do not think that data, our data do not gonna be treated as something valuable in money. It should be treated as valuable thing. Yes, for you, for persons around, for my spouse, for my children, for around the globe, but it don't be converted in money. It don't be somehow speculated everywhere. Because for example, when Facebook use my data and sell, it's, they are not selling, for example, my name, my surname, my age or something else. They using information about me to person which may be interested in use my data somewhere is the reason why we are going somehow be concerned about it and trying to make it valuable or trying to make profitable for us. But I think in this way, it's it's not very close to humanity. It's, uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's uh, something out there. That's why uh, my person view, my personal view, we have much more, we, we will face much more difficult with selling data uh, besides or just value it. We clearly see that uh, these values are already exist, by we do, but we do not going to sell it directly or to purchase or to, to try to make it uh, happen somewhere in market. Uh, I think you got my point. Maybe I do not use the right words for it, but I think you got what, what, what I mean and what I think about it. I, uh, uh, listen, listen. Can I can I say something? Uh, um, I think that there is a, a, a little mistake because uh, it's not totally correct that uh, Facebook uh, uh, is uh, selling data. Uh, Facebook don't sell data. Facebook are jealous of data. I tell you why. Because uh, it's true that Facebook is protecting privacy because they have just an ID. Uh, and uh, is uh, um, including all data inside an AG. Facebook don't want to sell data. Imagine that, for example, uh, in the GDPR regulation, there is a part of the GDPR where is uh, uh, previewed the, the portability of data from a platform to another platform, but to try to ask to Facebook to receive the data uh, from somebody. It's impossible. Uh, Facebook is using data inside the system. The value of data of Facebook is the, uh, the manipulation they do anytime uh, for any user inside to spend more time um, looking Facebook because more time is more visible, more visible is more powerful for marketing place. Uh, they sell marketing, don't sell data. Okay, uh, I, I, I got you. You know, but but actually, how do you treat it? It's not. It is not going to use as natural thing as oil, for example, because oil will just burn for starting some energy. But we can do something. I don't know, similar with the with the data, with the personal data, with something else. For example, with my network, you can't do something valuable if mm. I do not include it in this, uh. Uh, in, in all this stuff. Because that, that, that's why I'm talking about that. It's very easy to value, but it's not easy to sell, or it's not exactly. easy to sell to someone, or make it on the market some kind of I don't know uh, preferred in numbers. It, I, I'm talking about of that. Of course. Yeah, can I, can I just I, jump, jump in real quick? I think you guys are both you, right. I think it's not a... Oh, sorry. I, I'm saying that you guys are both uh, uh, both right. And I think, you know, we're just talking about opinions at the end of the day. Yeah. Right? And it's hard to, to challenge opinions. At the end of mm -hmm. the day, the market is the market. So if people want to get paid, right, if market research company will say, hey, I'll give you half, half on, you know, 500 bucks to get to know like your street address. They'll, you know, there's gonna be enough people around the world that will say yes, right? There's gonna be around, you know, some people will say no, but that's the beauty of the free market. The thing is, um, we don't have the, even the infrastructure. Think about something like that, yes. Whether it's right or wrong, I don't think it's up to us just to decide. I think the market will tell. Yeah, I, 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 Giovanni, I do you... Because I don't want Daniela to get arrested and I feel like any moment we're gonna have like a, like the Italian police leaning his head into the car on live video. Should I, should I 
<laughs> that would double up the audience for next time. I think. Yeah, we got a good viewership. On Very this true. Hey, you guys, uh, we're, we're, uh, you know, it, this has been fascinating. We're actually heading up on the two hours. And whenever we book these shows, we always kind of begin to think that two hours might be too long, but then time, time flies. Um, I think, yeah, I, I think, I, I think, no, I'm sorry. You know what? I am, I'm actually slightly off. I, there was one other question, I think. Was it Mark? Did you want to throw something in there? You're talking to me? Oh, Marco, you're there. Okay, I, you know, I, <laughs> hey, we, no, no, I, Marco, I, I I've just been you. listening. I'm, I'm, I'm loving all this. <laughs> okay, well, you know, Marco, you, you always have good observations. You always good throw good things in there. So I, I, I got to ask, at this time in the Caymans, are you still with your shirt off? That's the, that's the key question. <laughs> Uh, no, unfortunately, uh, I have to go meet with an investment banker, so I put a shirt on. Got it. And uh, it was, uh, nothing else. I, 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 that was actually not a joke. He is known for being in the Caymans, <laughs> shirts off, walking around. And we so hear, is like, that is that why you have five hundred people watching every time? Uh, I, you know, I, I think it's you. <laughs> I, I think you're the secret sauce. So, so Marco at least adds three people every time. So. No, uh, <laughs> Marco, you, you, you're welcome to put a question or, or thought to our illustrious all Italian all star panel if you care to. Well, I'm Italian. By okay. Heritage. Well, then you're, you know, you, 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 that, now you're the fifth wheel. So go ahead. <laughs> um, well, actually, Are you sure you're uh, I didn't catch. There, Gordon, or is it alcohol? I, I'm just high on life. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I'm high on good conversation. I'm high on. <laughs> Just kind of Sorry, stuff. Mark. Go ahead. Mark, please. <laughs> That's fine. Um, no, I'm uh, I'm loving your background, but <laughs> uh, I guess the, the I guess the key for me is uh, data, as you said, as, as the title of this whole topic is, is data is a thing that is the new oil, um, and the difference between data and oil, obviously, is that we're constantly making more of it, uh, whereas oil is a fixed resource. Um, I've I think that the biggest arguments I've been hearing so far are all around the idea of personal data, which I am actively trying to build an infrastructure to eliminate the accumulation thereof. Um, but until we get there, yes, people are raking in lots of personal data, but they're also raking in a lot of just general behavioral data. Do you see this being a, I suppose the word I'm looking for is an industry going forward or do you actually where I, I personally see this not being an industry 10 to 20 years from now simply because the insights that we're seeking out of the data that is being amassed by all these corporations and governments and everybody else in fact even individuals in some cases um, they're not going to be able to do the an analysis to grab the insights from that data faster than the AIs that will be already doing it I hear a challenge. Is anyone gonna pick up on the challenge? Yeah. I, I would I would like <laughs> to throw this to at, at Daniele as well because um, he has an AI as well that he's working on. Is Daniela under arrest or is he still with if us? if Daniele is still <laughs> there he is, here. I see him. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Luisa. Can you repeat? You, please? Have, you have you have your uh, lovely girlfriend uh, Maya, the AI. That you are, yeah. that you're using. So Maya, we Maya is a Maya uh, is a, the acronym of uh, my artificial intelligence advanced. <laughs> is, uh, oh, okay. is my biggest project. Uh, I'm uh, very focused on it uh, because uh, we are working on uh, Maya that is a uh, uh, a confidential artificial intelligence that uh, interact with people uh, see, um, yeah, like a. Uh, um, um, uh, like a Siri, but uh, more confidential than Siri. Uh, mm. And uh, um, of course, oh, we keep on losing the uh, uh, if you mm. try to write in confidential See? way, you can have a lot of data in any time. Of course, uh, a girlfriend too. Why not? So we were, we were asking about the market for this big data when uh, you know, uh, Marco was saying there, there's going to be AIs um, extracting the data, working the data, and managing the data. What do you think? But um, 
as I mentioned a uh, few minutes ago uh, during the, the, the comment of, uh, I don't remember the name, sorry, uh, I'm agreed that uh, it's not so simple to, to, to have a, a value, an exactly value and a, and a market of data. But uh, uh, what the company are doing is not uh, uh, to manage data uh, to sell, but to manage data for the service that you can uh, uh, give directly to, to the community. Uh, I see, for example, in, uh, in some comments online uh, that uh, somebody is asking uh, if uh, in DT Circle uh, we are working on a platform like, for example, Facebook. No, uh, um, uh, of course, it was uh, one of the first approach that uh, we have, but uh, uh, we don't need because uh, uh, I prefer to go in a browser extension that capture data and uh, recognize data to user and uh, not to, to try to fight with Facebook. Is it possible? Facebook is the, the biggest social network. Uh, well, uh, I'm not so stupid to fight with Facebook. Uh, I want to be in the middle. If I, I am in the middle and uh, I intercept a part of the uh, data that people are generating, I'm already win because I have the same data that I have Facebook with a different way. And that, different that use of course, there, I, I think because uh, uh, it's, oh, it's very important because, sorry, sorry, it's, it's okay. very important that we don't understand what uh, I already told a few minutes ago. Uh, Facebook, the, 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 the real value of Facebook is not, uh, is not uh, that they are selling data they are using data uh, to uh, to their community then it's a totally different uh, thing uh, i don't think that uh, is uh, uh, important for me facebook uh, imagine how many billions of dollars spend this company to their uh, artificial intelligence google or facebook uh, it's stupid if they use uh, uh, investment to artificial intelligence to have data ready to sell to someone else. No, it's not the right way. They are generating data and they are using data uh, to have more service to promote inside the same system directly to the same user that are generating data. This is, this is the way. The difference that uh, uh, we have in our ecosystem is just that, uh, of course, when we when we sell services based on this data, a part of the profit is recognized to the same people that is generating data. This is the difference. But we are, it's impossible, and I'm agree with my colleague uh, on this panel uh, that uh, if you think to to uh, receive data and sell data uh, is not so simple, is not right the way to, to have the, a value because mm -hmm. it's impossible. There are a lot of uh, uh, particular things that you have to consider to, to have a value of data, including what somebody is, uh, is writing in the chat. And is it right? Uh, calculating, uh, mining, it's uh, a, lo a lot of part that... Uh, you have to consider in the, the, the value data. So um, uh, the right way is, uh, is to generate data thanks to a community and use the same data to, to promote services and the products at the same community, like Facebook. You know, guys, I, I don't know. I don't know, Elisa. Tell me if I was clear because uh, for my English, I don't know if uh, it's clear what I'm saying. It's, it's yeah. an international crowd. It's okay. Uh, Sergey, go ahead, please. Yeah, yeah. Guys, you know, in my humble opinion, uh, I think that for us is so insulting that all that corporation do not share their money with us because they we, because somehow we are being engaged in all this process but we don't have a profit they have but we do not have the, um, the uh, our own profit from all this stuff that's why we are so concerned about this wow how it can be valued who's interested uh. in i think it's the reason why we are here and talking so much about personal data i know selling sharing mm, telling or speaking about it that's why we are concerned 
we're just looking for a little bit more money for our uh, looks like personal data because it do not appear before it, before this, I don't know, before this digital world. In real world, no one of us get interested, really, no one. Well, it's <laughs> well, 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 so, Sergey, let, let me jump in. I mean, I, I, have, I have my own problems with Facebook, mainly because they canceled my main account. And for the past year, I've almost, I've been on my backup account. <laughs> so believe me, I don't like them. But also let's kind of face reality. You and I specifically, okay, mm -hmm. you, you and I specifically have leveraged social media to build up our followings, our, you know, for me, my law practice, you know, for you, you got this great show. I mean, and you're live streaming multiple venues and you're not yeah. paying Facebook to do that. Okay, and you would not necessarily yes. be able to connect with all these people and build your audience, build your viewership, unless there was this free social utility out there. So I, I'm, you know, just because we're not getting paid, that doesn't mean we're not receiving value. You and know, Gordon, I have to add for this. I do not even for I do not even pay for spreading my information or spreading my speech from the stage, from the real stage, from the real life. I am going to the huge conferences from ten from, uh, I don't know, thousands of people and I'm spreading my information for free because users want to hear that. And it's not concerned to the Facebook, to the YouTube. I uh, make them very interesting content. That's why they are looking for that. Okay, well, pardon me for using a bad expression in English, but the reason many of those butts are in many of those seats to hear yeah. your free message is because of social media, not all. Okay, but a, a decent chunk. So I, I, look, I, I, I'm not saying that we're, we're receiving appropriate value, okay? Mm -hmm. But you know, there's a reason we're using Facebook and not MySpace. You know, there's a reason people use Twitter, even though Twitter's you know highly censored at this point, so it's annoying. It's you know they are utilities. There's a monopoly aspect to them, but it, you know to, to, we are we're getting paid in value. We're getting paid in utility. We're just not getting you know a, a check. With some money on it, so I'm and, I'm and I'm not saying it's the only way to do things. Yes, you can go stand on the street corner in London and give speeches to crowds, and you will get the message out. But it, you know, these things are the modern printing presses, and they give each one of us a printing press in a way. Right? So the it's like everything else. I think there's a pro and a con. It's, it's just they've made something that's very enticing in terms of its immediacy and its dopamine to keep us all in one place. And I, for, I'll also add, I think for better or for worse, we're living in, in this world of natural monopolies. So that, you know, there's a natural monopoly for a social uh, utility like Facebook. There's a natural monopoly for YouTube. I don't know if it's necessarily a natural monopoly for Twitter. It's kind of a weird little thing, but it's, I, don't, I, don't, I, 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 I think, I, I guess the bottom line is I think we're already capturing the value or a lot of the value that arises from the use of our personal data because you know we're not paying for this, we're not paying for their servers, and it, it's a Faustian bargain. It's not all good and, and it's not all bad. So, and, and again, I'm not a, I'm not a big Facebook fan because they, yeah, they really they really mess with my why, life. Yes, that's why it's so, so difficult and so complicated to understand how really in money or in profit it's worth. That's why it's it, it's just a value and that's it. For for me, it's it, it's enough. I don't know how it treats from from another side, but from for me, it's really enough. That's why I, I do not go be jumping in, in that space. I'm sorry, maybe I do not explain something in no. much more uh, understandable way. Sorry for that, but 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 I think all, all of you got it. What, what I mean. Fair enough. Sorry, guys. Uh, great questions. I unfortunately got a jump. I have a conference call coming up, but um, yeah, I mean, it's been a pleasure here. Uh, if there's any questions, I'm happy to gonna follow up. Uh, Eloisa can share my contact well, And actually, so everyone knows, I'm gonna get everyone's contact information and I'm gonna put it on the show notes of the show on YouTube and on Facebook and everywhere. So the, and the contact information will be visible for all to see. Mm -hmm. And we have, Appreciate we got up to 500 viewers of the show, which is amazing. And we're gonna post this, like I said, post this online and the long tail, I'm sure we'll build up to hundreds of millions. So this, 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 this shows me more popular than PewDiePie, I can feel it. Fantastic. Thanks, Gordon. <laughs> sure. Thanks, Eloisa. Thanks, everyone, for getting sure, sure. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Great Christian, for being here. Bye bye. Bye. Eloisa, did, was there anything else you wanted to cover, or did you. I think we covered. What, what I think we covered every aspect. Um, I just really wanted to wrap this conversation up with uh, some last words from, uh, from Giovanni. 
because uh, in the end, you know, we've been discussing a lot about the value of, um, of data and, um, and then we've come to the conclusion that it has to be market-based uh, and the one that can really give us an insight here is Giovanni, uh, even though, uh, you know, we, we're gonna have to see how this goes. But Giovanni, what do you think that, how do you think that the market um, will help in setting the value more or less precisely? And what do you think are the drivers of this value? Also think about the traditional sorry, sorry, sorry. market you know well. Uh, Sorry, Giovanni. Lisa. Uh, Giovanni, Giovanni is a friend of mine, so we understand that. Uh, uh, and excuse me if I uh, uh, break the, the question. Uh, Absolutely. I'm so sorry, but I have to go because <laughs> I have 2% of battery and uh, sure. 10 minutes, 10 minutes no worries. to at home yeah. before lockdown. Thanks for being on the show. We okay. appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, Daniele. Grazie. Grazie. Thank Grazie you very you. much. It was Ciao, Daniele. Very, Grazie. Very happy to stay here see I, you soon giovanni you you get the swan song you get the great conclusion so go um so in my opinion um uh, in next future we can see definitely that uh, um data will uh cover also uh, price wise uh, uh just the the trend that we we face uh, during the year so i'm pretty positive for this uh, and uh, my conclusion is that uh, clearly um, uh, so many companies that are, uh, if we talk of course about listing companies uh, um, are facing and uh, trying to understand how all the data they are getting get, get values. So to figure out what kind of uh, drivers that can be uh, probably different for uh, maybe uh, companies or business that they use, but definitely it's uh, one of the key of the next future trends. I like it. Yep. All right, um, I, I think now, now we're calling, we're gonna declare victory and go home. So I wanna thank our esteemed three panelists. Um, Eloisa, hold on, am I numbering this correctly? Our three extra panelists and our panel leader, Eloisa, um, I want to thank my co-host Sandra. <laughs> I, I like that. Uh, I like that title. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I know you do. I, I, I that was just for you. <laughs> uh, but basically, I want to thank everyone. We, you know, we. I don't think we've ever done two shows one day before, but um, it was a stretch goal, as they say, and I'm happy we did it. And Sandra, do you want to land this plane? Yeah, I, I, I think you mentioned everything. So the, the Italians were really cool, really great. So grazie mille. Uh, to our Italian friends all around the world. It's good to see Marco again in the show. Marco, thank you for being part. Sergey, also Torben, Richard, Aaron, Christina, and also my friend Gordon. So thank you all. Please uh, join our Telegram channels and, um, and press the subscribe button on the, on the YouTube channel. And we like. Don't forget to like. You and the like. Over. We had over 500 live viewers, so we really appreciate that. Next week, we are here. Uh, same time, same place, same link. So we look forward to seeing everybody. But for now, have a good evening, good day. Talk to you soon. And again, to our Italian friends, grazie mille. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Bye. Grazie, grazie mille. Thank ciao. you. Grazie.